So today I'm back in the kitchen and filming for you guys. I feel like I haven't filmed anything in the kitchen for a little while. So today I'm going to do my Mediterranean roasted vegetable quiche. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Now please do hit the subscribe button so you're notified of when my videos go live. Um, so yes, that's very important. Please do like and subscribe. Now I've got that out of the way, let me show you what we are doing today. So I've already chopped these veg. So they're just roughly, I've got courgette, yellow pepper, red pepper, and aubergine, all roughly chopped, and I'm going to pop them. I've got an oven tray here with my bacon glide. This is quite an old piece, but as you know, I love it and it lasts forever. So I'm just gonna pop the veg onto my tray there. And then I've got a punnet of cherry tomatoes. They are on the vine. It doesn't matter whether they are or not. So I'm just gonna take them off the vine and pop them in the tray with the rest of the vegetables. And I'm gonna pop the whole lot in. So I'll just pull these off. I love little tomatoes. I do grow them in the greenhouse, but these are not homegrown. Hopefully later on in the year, I will be able to use mine. So here, they're all in there. Just give them a little bit of a mix around. And then I've got some balsamic vinegar. This is not glaze. I do love balsamic glaze, but this is just balsamic vinegar. And I'm just gonna give the veg quite a good glug of that. And then I'm gonna put them in the roasting oven of the agar. If you don't have an agar, it's fine. Just pop them in an electric oven, probably on about 200 degrees. I'm gonna put these on the floor of my roasting oven. So down on the bottom actually got the tray in there, so I'm just going to slide that up and pop those into the oven. They're going to cook there for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're nice and crisp. I don't want them burnt, but I just want them nicely roasted. So while my vegetables are roasting in the agar, it's time for the pastry. Now you can make your own pastry, and I often do, but I want this to be a quick and easy quiche, so I am using Just Roll Short Crust Pastry, which is absolutely brilliant, and I like to roll it myself. So I don't buy the pre-rolled pastry, I buy this one in the block and then roll it out so I can get it to the thickness that I want, and I like it to be quite thin. This is for a picnic, so I'm using this loose bottom tin, which is just personal preference. I like to take it out of the tin when we're going to a picnic and just pop it on a plate. And so I use this because it's much easier to get it out than if you use a traditional quiche dish. This I would use if we were just eating it at home. So I'm going to pop a little bit of plain flour on my work surface and just spread that out. Also always flour my rolling pin as well. Open this packet. Oh. Like this paste is also brilliant. You can put it in the freezer too. So um, it's quite handy if you just want to pull out a block. Um, this is quite soft. It's been sitting on the side for a little while, but that doesn't matter. It makes it easier to roll. You might need to add a little bit more flour around, but just keep turning it and making sure that it is well floured so it doesn't stick to your work surface. And then just keep on rolling till it's the thickness that you would like. A little bit more, I'm gonna flip it over again. There. I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to put my tin nice and close and then just carefully lift up the pastry and pop it over the tin like that making sure that you've got enough all the way around the edges so then you just lift it and make sure I use my finger like this um, that and I just gently work the pastry into the edges of the tin. Just 
lift it. You want to make sure that the pastry um, is well into the sides without it being stretched because it will shrink a little bit when you cook it. So you don't want it to be on the tight side. That sort of makes sense, tight, but um, it's better to kind of push the pastry down so you've got extra rather than it being kind of taut. Um, and I kind of squidge it down and in as well. Like that. And I just go around it a couple of times actually to make sure that it's well in. I haven't got a knife, so let me grab one. The little knife, and then I'm just going to cut off the excess, but I'm not cutting it closely. I'm leaving probably a centimetre and a half around the edge of the tin overlap. And I will show you why in a mo. Round we go. Now, the best thing about using an auger is you don't need to blind bake your pastry. I'm going to cook it on the floor of the roasting oven um, and that cooks the bottom of the pastry which is amazing. If you're using an electric oven you do need to put a piece of greaseproof paper over your pastry and then some rice or some baking balls or something like that and then pop it in for about 10-15 minutes to blind bake it before you put the filling in but we're doing it on the Argus, so we don't need to. Now I'm just going to pinch with my fingers the pastry into the side of the tin, like this. And I'm going to go all the way round. I can just hear that Pen is coming. She uses the cat flap now. Hi Pen, hello. that all the way around. Because I'm doing this in a loose bottom tin as well, I am going to pop it onto an oven tray because it can be a little bit tricky with the loose bottom. You don't want to get it wrong and push that bottom through and then you end up in a mess. So I'm just going to get the oven tray out. Here. And I'm going to pop that on ready to put the roasted vegetables in and the filling so I shall do that when those are cooked. So it's time to get the vegetables out. So there they are, they smell really good. So I'm just going to pop them there to cool for a little bit while I show you how to make the quiche filling. Close that up. Right, I've got a bowl here and I've got a couple of eggs so I'm just going to crack the eggs first into my bowl. And the second one. And then I'm going to pop my fingers um, a little bit of black pepper. And then I've got some pink Himalayan rock salt. So this is a really good alternative to sea salt and it's also quite good for you as well. So it's much better than normal salt. I don't use normal um, grained table salt ever anymore, unless I'm use, using it to do like a mouthwash or something if someone's got a tooth infection or to gargle with, but I don't use it for eating or for cooking. So this stuff is really good. And then I'm going to pop about 150 ml of double cream in with the eggs. So that's half of this. I'm not gonna measure it out, I'll just guess it. A little bit more, that's about right. And then I'm gonna whisk it up. A good whisk and make sure that the eggs are really well mixed in. So you can see that's a really lovely color. These are our eggs from home and they're much darker than normal supermarket eggs, which is lovely. So that's well mixed together there. And I'm just gonna get the oven gloves so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to pop the roasted vegetables into the pastry that we just rolled out. So I'll just scoop those in and pop those 
in the middle. things about this quiche is you can eat it really any time of year. It doesn't have to just be in the summer and you can change the vegetables as well. These are just ones that I particularly like. So I'm just going to spread those out a little bit but you don't need to be too particular or precise. So, that is perfect and then I'm just going to pour this egg and cream mixture over the top move that out of the way like that and again it just spreads itself out so you don't need to do anything I love this cute it's really simple and then feta so I'm actually going to use the whole block and I'm going to crumble it in the packet over the top of the vegetables so I'm just going to squidge it as much as I can while it's in the packet to break it up and that makes it easier to crumble over the top. You don't really want huge pieces. It's better to have kind of smaller, smaller chunks and then literally just crumble the packet over the top of the vegetables. Bit of a messy business. edges as well as not just a mountain of feta in the middle because it melts in it's delicious and I'm not a massive feta fan actually this cooked with the vegetables is really really yummy so get all of those bits out and then I've grated some parmesan here I've kept my rind, that's really important. You can freeze it and you can use it in soups. So don't throw the rind away. So I've got a mountain of grated Parmesan and I'm then just going to sprinkle that over the top. I might not use it all, because there is quite a lot there, but just a good sprinkle of Parmesan. And then pop it in the oven to bake. So probably about 30 minutes until it's sort of nice and golden brown on the top and you can see that the pastry is cooked through. So about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the temperature of your oven. I'm gonna pop it on the floor of my roasting oven. Do keep an eye on the pastry to make sure it doesn't burn. You can always put your plain cold sheet if you're using an auger above or if you're using an electric oven, you can put some tin foil on the top. So in this goes. like that and I'll show you what it's like when it's when it's done. So I mentioned earlier a cold plain sheet and this is mine. It's not sparkling clean, it's very well used. But this you must always keep out of your auger and if you don't want something to burn, um, whether you're baking a cake or pastry or something like that, you can slide this in above and it stops the heat um, catching the top of whatever it is that you're cooking. So it's a really useful bit of kit, but it is really important to keep it out of the argo so it's cold because once the heat's sort of got to it, it will still let, you know, it will still brown it more than it would if it was cold. So this is really useful for cakes, meringues, pastry, something like that. I haven't needed to use it today, so I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna get the quiche out of the oven. been in for 35 minutes and I think that's looking really really good. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how to make a really easy simple vegetarian quiche and believe me it is super yummy.